Talking Minnesota Golden Gophers and happy to do so with Ryan Burns from Gopher Illustrated. It is the Minnesota sports platform on 247 Sports. Uh, the recruiting class much better than what we've seen under other regimes, uh, seventh ranked in the Big Ten. So consider the top heavy Big Ten. So there's a lot of tremendous programs right above Minnesota, according to the two th 2018 rankings and Minnesota placed uh, at number 37, according to 247's composite, uh, seven kids already on campus. Your thoughts about the 18 class? I think it was a much needed step in the right direction. When Mark Coyle made the switch from Tracy Clay's to PJ Fleck, recruiting rankings was cited as one of the reasons. Now, again, folks can believe whatever they want to believe about the recruiting rankings, whether it's just for the fan eyes, whether coaches don't care, which is ludicrous to me. But again, it's something to where it's a determinant of talent. Now, are we great talent evaluators? I think we're doing a much better job each and every year. But again, these, these rankings mean something. Alabama and Ohio State aren't signing two and three star kids. They're signing the four and five star kids. So I think recruiting, when you look at it, I know that we had a huge piece about it. And that December signing period, Minnesota signed their best defensive line class in the history of recruiting rankings in the internet era. So in the last 18 years. They did that on the defensive line, offensive line, and at wide receiver. They signed the top-rated junior college quarterback in the country. Again, P.J. Fleck is selling all of this to kids off five wins. Now, imagine what P.J. can do with seven, eight wins behind his back, a brand-new facility that just opened up, which is spectacular. I think it could be a new era of Minnesota football. Now, these kids have to get older. They have to get better. They have to get more experience. But landing a guy like Daniel Pa'alele, the six-foot-nine, Australian monster tackle. The man took legitimate official visits to Alabama and Georgia, the two teams in the national championship games, a few weeks before he decided on Minnesota. That doesn't happen. That hasn't happened. Again, getting these kids on campus early, getting Carlos Dunlap, getting Daniel Pa'alele, Thomas Rush, Alex Riegelsberger on campus in a weight program, in a nutrition program is such a step ahead. So I think that recruiting, as long as it continues to go on the upward direction, which Again, I think you're going to be able to see some dominoes potentially fall here in the next couple of weeks in this 2019 class, but it's very exciting to follow recruiting now as a Golden Gopher fan. Yes, Fa'alele, the number 19 rated tackle, according to 247 Sports out of uh, IMG Academy. So if we look at the landscape of uh, the, the uh, signees for 2018, who gets you really excited? I've talked about him already. I mean, Victor Viramonte is already on campus. Again, I want competition in quarterback. I want someone to push each other each and every day trying to vie for that starting position. And I don't think Minnesota's had that here in years. Now, if Tanner Morgan and Victor Viramontes can get after each other every single day and push each other, that's only going to benefit this offense as a whole. You look at both Daniel Fa'alele and Curtis Dunlap Jr. Again, you don't have guys like that on the team. I mean, you look at them compared to the other offensive linemen that Minnesota has, Daniel is going to stand out immediately because of his stature. But again, once he gets his hands on you, you're not going anywhere. Now, Curtis Dunlap maybe has to shed some weight here. But again, that's the beauty of getting him on campus early in January. You can get him with a nutritionist. You can get him into these workouts and help him shed some weight to potentially be an early contributor there. I already mentioned Thomas Rush, someone who physically looks, I mean, he looks like the part of a Big Ten outside linebacker. He's all of six foot three, very long, very athletic as well. So if, if these early enrollees, Mark, are any indications of what Minnesota just signed, I think folks should be very excited. So we're off to 2019 on the recruiting path. Uh, so forget the rankings because they will change uh, tremendously over the next uh, 10 months. But uh, certainly look at uh, the targets and look at the hard commits, knowing that some of them will flip as well. But uh, the majority won't. Uh, so 2019, how does that look early on? Well, I, I think that what Minnesota has going right now is exciting. Now, they have a very big visit coming up this week when the top Midwest quarterback, Max Duggan, arrives on campus for a multi-day visit. Now, I know that there's been a lot of talk about him uh, on our Gopher Illustrated site. We, Kyle Goblish and I have talked a lot about what this potentially means for Minnesota. And if Minnesota was able to get a quarterback commitment to pair with Cole Kramer from Eden Prairie and Max Duggan, I think you could see some potential dominoes fall. Now, I think a lot kind of goes into this visit this week. Minnesota has been planning for this visit uh, for quite some time. They want to make sure Max Duggan knows he's a priority at Minnesota. They would love him to kind of be the crown jewel so far of this class to get in the ear of other people. So I think early indications are Max Duggan, this visit coming up this week, very, very important for Minnesota. 
And then I know folks like to talk a lot about the in-state guys. And then Quinn Carroll from in from Edina, Minnesota, Bryce Benhart, who was just on campus at Minnesota last weekend from Lakeville North, two four-star offensive linemen. Now, it appears that Quinn Carroll appears to be favoriting Notre Dame. That would be my indication at this time. Uh, I think that's a lot of indication from different people that that's kind of where he's leaning right now. He still is planning on taking all five official visits and then a multi-day unofficial visit to Minnesota. So a lot can change there. And then, you know, with Bryce Benhart back on campus again for Minnesota this weekend, he is a monster. I mean, he's six foot eight. He took fourth place in the heavyweight uh, division of wrestling this year. And, and again, knowing that the low man wins in wrestling for Bryce to be six foot eight, at least, and do that well, uh, it's a pretty good thing for me. So again, I think Minnesota's in it for both and we'll have to see how things play out here in the next few months. Yeah. Checking out Duggan here as the fourth rated dual threat quarterback in the nation out of Lewis central in Iowa has uh, a number of uh, high level teams uh, on his heels. He already has offers from Ohio state, Notre Dame, Nebraska, and Iowa, including Minnesota with a visit coming up this weekend. We got Ryan Burns on the line from Gopher Illustrated. Got to check out his work at 247 Sports. Uh, does a tremendous job, of course, for us when we can track him down for these discussions. And uh, man, Ryan, you just set us up with the personnel for the spring game coming up on April 14th. We'll be watching on the Big Ten Network. And I want to set you up for this, Ryan. Uh, maybe not the next time we have you on, because I'd love to get your thoughts about the spring game and obviously the final two weeks of sessions there in Minneapolis. But uh, as kind of a fun topic in May, June, mm -hmm. during the dead time, think about best wins since you've been watching covering the team. Think about excruciating rough losses that still sting. Be thinking about best current player best all-time player and again you can you can put the parameters on that if you don't want to go back to the national championship games of uh, or the national championship teams of the 1940s but uh if you want to rein that in uh during your lifetime uh favorite player favorite player all time all sorts of things we can mix it up and maybe some things that you would like to change uh concerning minnesota football big 10 football and if we put the commissioner's cap on you for the the one day uh college football across the board so we like to kick that around with uh, our media contributors sounds good to me yeah i mean there's a lot of different topics there i mean just even off the top of my head and we'll get into this a, a little bit later but you know best wins i've seen in quite some time uh you know that washington state victory in the holiday bowl again that ultimately lands tracy clay's a job out of washington state he shuts down that pac-12 offense with minnesota having no defensive backs now jay Sabo being the d coordinator at the time but Tracy Clay's defense and Jay Sabo shut down Washington State. Minnesota wins that bowl. Ultimately, now Tracy Clay's is the defensive coordinator at Washington State. And I mean, you can't tell me that didn't play a huge part into it. I know Minnesota was big underdogs going into that last bowl game. And then, I mean, just in the last few seasons, talking about excruciating losses, I don't think folks that are Gopher fans are going to forget that Michigan loss two years ago anytime soon. Minnesota thought they won the game to Drew Wall at Tarski. Turns out his knee was down at the one yard line. Minnesota's offensive coordinator runs a three motion play. The clock is running. No one knows. And then Minnesota ultimately can't beat Michigan at the goal line. I mean, just heartbreak, absolute heartbreak for Gopher fans. But yeah, a ton of good stuff to get into here in the next few months. Okay, Ryan Burns from Gopher Illustrated on the 247 platform uh, there for college football. Ryan, uh, it's a great discussion and uh, the insight is tremendous. We appreciate you stopping by. Sounds good. I'll talk to you here soon, Mark.